All right, guys, in today's episode, we're going to show you how to install a Sterling sectional shower unit. This is a four piece model. That is the base, the two side walls and the back wall. They are all separate. It is a 36 inch wide by 34 inch deep unit. We're going to show you basically how we did this from start to finish. This here is what it looks like beforehand. We installed a Moen shower valve on this shower unit, but you can install about any brand you want. Those do not come with the shower unit. You will have to purchase that separately. So we're just showing you here what the valve looks like in the wall. Uh, we actually install that before we install the unit. Here are some of the tools that you'll need. That shower strainer right there is a brass one. That is what we use, but there's actually a few different models out there. Uh, we'll show you that. That right there is a strainer wrench that's used to tighten down the strainer. You'll need a cordless drill of some sort, a tube of pure silicone. You may also want to use some plumber's putty, but we'll show you later on why we use the silicone as well. And you'll need some wood shims. Basically, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have your drain and the floor roughed into the correct spot. We have already done that part. Um, and we have our two inch drain pipe sticking up above the floor right where we need it. Now Mike is showing you how you install the strainer on the shower base. You know, there are different brands of these shower units. Uh, some of the bases might actually come with a strainer that you just insert the gasket. These Sterling models do not. You actually have to install the strainer. Uh, like I said earlier, we like these brass shower strainers. And I'll show you why here later on as he gets ready to put that on. So you wanna uh, apply a bead of silicone here around the strainer. Now, you know, some plumbers will use putty right there. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, we like to use the pure silicone. It works well and we do not want leaks here. You, know, you gotta realize this shower base is getting installed on this concrete floor. You do not want that to leak. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're removing the entire shower unit and uh, trying to fix that, so. From underneath there, you can see he's tightening the strainer on. Basically, the strainer comes with a rubber gasket and a cardboard gasket, as well as that big brass nut to tighten it down. The rubber gasket will go between the base and the strainer. Then there's a cardboard gasket that goes between the rubber gasket and the nut. The only reason you have that is so when you're tightening that nut down, it don't wanna pinch the rubber gasket out. It'll actually kind of slide on there. So Mike here is using a strainer wrench. You can buy those at any hardware store, but if you don't want to purchase that and you have a good pair of uh, big channel locks, you can use that as well. Those strainer wrenches are nice to have because you know they work on kitchen sink strainers uh, as well. And it's kind of a specialty tool designed just for that. You know, when you're using that pure silicone, you get done, you want to wipe that stuff up right away. It is sticky and messy. Uh, because it is 100% silicone. So make sure you really clean that up good. Don't wait too long or it'll leave a sticky residue all around the base of the shower. Don't worry, some of you will probably do that anyway, but you know what I mean. <laughs> all right, we're gonna install a shower base here shortly, but first thing we wanna do is sweep up all the debris out of there, right? <clears throat> Might as well have a nice clean work job site there while you're at it. Boy, Mike just kicked that out of the way. You can see we got some other plumbing in the walls over there. There's a there's a couple sinks on the other side of that wall. This is actually kind of a small uh, motel that we're doing some plumbing in here. Just outside of Omaha, so they do not require cast iron. All right, what Mike's going to do here is just kind of do a little test run, okay? So these walls were framed in... Uh, you know, if they were done correctly, they sh everything should fit perfect. But you want to always kind of just set the uh, shower base first on the floor. You're dealing with concrete, guys, so nothing's ever level. Uh, you know, put your level all the way around it. Try to use a two-foot or four-foot level if you can. Mike's got a two-foot one there. Looks like maybe that back corner is just a little bit low. So he's just kind of getting an idea here of, um, you know, what it needs to be. So... All right, as you can see there, that piece of pipe stubbed up. Mike just took a pencil and marked it, all right? What he's doing is just measuring how much of that pipe he's gonna need to cut off um, that's sticking up through the floor there. 
Some guys will actually leave that uh, piece of pipe stubbed up high and set the base and then cut the pipe later with a pair of inside cutters, uh, which is fine to do. You just gotta be a little more careful. You know, if you do your measurements right here, you can actually cut this piece of pipe ahead of time. Now Mike's gonna use a pair of inside cutters here just so you can kind of see how they work. But uh, you know, at this point, you could use a hand saw, a sawzall, anything to cut that piece of pipe. You know, that brass shower strainer that we use, one, it's just sturdy, so we like that. But it'll actually slide over the top of this pipe and then there's a rubber gasket that later on we'll show you that we install. They do make glue shower strainers. But man, you gotta be exactly precise on your, uh, your measurements and cuts. And then basically what you do is put some glue on the pipe, glue on your strainer and set the shower base over it. But like I said, if you're off just a little bit, uh, it's a pain in the butt. So that brass strainer there makes it a lot easier. Once you cut that, uh, Mike was just showing you there with this pocket knife. You wanna ream, you know, deburr the piece of pipe. You want all the little shavings and stuff off. You want a nice smooth piece of pipe sticking up there. All right, so you're gonna need a bag of mortar mix. Uh, I don't think we showed that in the beginning. Uh, our bad, man, we forgot that part. You wanna use pure mortar mix. Don't get a, you know, a gravel, a sand topping concrete. Uh, you don't want any of those small pebbles in there. You want this stuff to be, you know, pretty smooth. I have seen over the years, some guys use drywall mud uh, to do it. I've seen people use, you know, that expanding foam that they'll spray under the showers. Man, guys, I'm telling you, we have installed hundreds, if not thousands of these units over the years, and mortar mix just to us is the way to go. What it does is it provides a good solid base under the shower base. You know, you gotta remember these shower bases are plastic. When you stand in there, you don't want that flexing at all. Uh, plus, if your floor isn't 100% level, you know, you can mix some of this stuff and put down and kind of use it to level up your shower base. When you get that base installed, you want it as level as possible. Take the extra time to make sure it's level. So here Mike's is just mixing up some of that stuff, right? It's, it's just like mixing up cake batter or something, right? You don't want it too runny. You know, you'd probably rather err on the side of it being a little bit more dry. Um, you know, if it's too runny, it's just gonna run all over the floor there. So you can see here how he, you know, made it pretty good. Uh, like I said, not not too moist, all right? How many of you hate that word moist? I, I do, I don't know why, but. All right, so anyway, get this stuff here, just kind of spread out across the floor. You know, you can also use this stuff to kind of seal in that hole there, you know, the, when we had the floor broke out, if you're wondering why we didn't pour the concrete back right up to the pipe is you wanna leave yourself a little bit of room for error. You gotta remember when we put that drain in, those walls were not framed in yet. Um, so you never know if the framer's gonna be off, you know, even a half inch, uh, inch or so is too much. So by not pouring back the, you know, the concrete all the way around that pipe, if you had to dig down and move your piece of pipe over even a half inch or something, you can do it without having to break up the floor. So, but when you're done, you want to kind of seal that back up underneath there. You don't want no bugs crawling up out of that dirt. So he's just kind of showing you here, you know, you want to be careful that strainer that's on the bottom of that shower base is going to stick down below the floor a little bit. So that's why he kind of, you know, is moving the concrete away from the drain pipe. If that makes sense. This is kind of fun to watch, right? Right there, I can just hear it in my head, that sound of that ch 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 All right, so now that we got that, uh, the mortar base set in there, he's gonna go ahead and set the shower base in there. If he did everything right, uh, you know, that piece of pipe's gonna be cut perfect. You gotta remember, guys, this is a professional licensed plumber here who has done this an awful lot. Take your time measure stuff out, you know, don't get in a big rush. You gotta remember, once these shower units go in, you do not want them coming back out because there'll be drywall all the way around it and everything else, so. There you can see how that piece of pipe uh, just stubbed up just perfect. He's kind of going around the base, just smushing that to mortar mix in a little bit underneath there. Now this here's the part where he's gonna take his level and go all the way around. 
You want that thing, like I said, guys, you want that perfect. The reason is when you go to install these shower walls later, you know, they're six foot tall. If your shower base is a little bit, you know, off level at the bottom, it's gonna put your shower walls really off level at the top. So once you get the base set, you got it level and all that good stuff, they come with these little clips that you mount on the uh, edge of the shower unit there. And that's actually gonna fasten the shower base to the wall. This here's kind of a close up of it. We like to use these deck screws, galvanized screws. You could probably get away with using, you know, just some black drywall screws, but man, you're, you're dealing with water. We just, we like using, you know, coated screws of some sort. We're plumbers, man. We're just used to doing everything the right way. All right, so once you get this base set here, Mike's gonna go ahead here now, man. Take a piece of cardboard and put over the top of this shower unit here. All right, here's the fun part, guys. These are the shower walls. Basically, what makes these Sterlings kind of unique is you actually install the walls and they'll snap in together. Um, there's no bolts, there's no, you know, nothing like that. You can actually do all the work from the front or inside the shower unit. So now sometimes you gotta take your razor knife or your pocket knife or whatever and trim where the hooks go together. That's what Mike's doing right here. You gotta remember when they make this stuff in a factory, it's not perfect, all right? So you gotta kinda shave stuff a little bit and uh, these grooves, you'll see what I mean here later on when I, we show you how these go together here. So this is just uh, you know a guy who's done like I said, hundreds if not thousands of these units. He knows ahead of time that you gotta kinda trim these up. If you've ever installed any of these units, if you're another plumber watching this, man, right here you know exactly what we're talking about. You want these edges to be nice and smooth, take your razor knife. Like I said, man, nothing's imperfect. You know, these things are made in some factory somewhere and uh, you know, it's, it's a mold. It's not 100% perfect, it's a plastic. By the way, if, you, uh, if you're starting to watch our channel and you guide us from watching TikTok, we have a pretty good channel over there to uh, get going, man. Uh, we don't show us quite as many how-to videos over there, but uh, we do have a lot of good content. So if you're uh, from TikTok watching us, welcome, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us. All right, so here's the procedure, guys. You got the base in. Everything's good. First thing you're going to do is install the back wall. You can kind of see here, like I said, this is a a kind of a hook system uh, that these go. So get this back wall in, and now you're going to fasten it to the studs. What we like to do is pre-drill the holes with a bit, you know, about a quarter inch drill bit. Um, drill that first, nice and easy. Don't, don't push. Remember, again, you're dealing with plastic here. Make sure this wall is nice and level. Like I said, you can see there where Mike Man is just taking his time to do it. Once you get that level, go ahead and put your screws in. The reason we pre-drill is we like those screw heads, you know, to kind of be flush uh, as much as possible. Now, if you don't do that step, is anybody going to notice? Probably not. You know, you might have a little bump in your drywall, but at the end of the day, man, it, it's it's just the right way to do stuff, you know. So try to get those screw heads as flat in there as possible. Again, here's Mike just kind of taking his razor knife and trimming the edge of these shower walls. Getting all that excess plastic off is what you're doing here. Be careful, guys, using these knives, man. You see Mike's got a good solid pair of, you know, mechanic utility type of gloves on there. So be careful, man. I don't want any of you cutting yourself. What we've noticed about these shower units that we've got in here, man, and trust me, they're all made by Sterling, but, um, you know, some will show up and they've actually got damage to them. They're cracked already. And a lot of that's just shipping. You know, they come in cardboard boxes. It's hard to ship these things. Imagine them coming across boats and, you know, the back of semis getting thrown around. So, um, it happens a lot, but we check them in ahead of time. Now here on these, Mike's actually using a file on his cordless drill just to kind of shave these walls down a little bit. Um, again, you want everything smooth. Sometimes guys, you'll pull these right out of the box 
and everything slides together perfect. Not always, but. All right, so what we're gonna show you here is you actually do apply a little bit of silicone around the front edge bottom of these units. That sticker that's on one of those walls show you exactly where to put it. Don't forget this step right here. It's actually the only part you will need silicone on, you know, other than installing that strainer. That's what makes these sterling units kind of cool is once you get these walls all in and all installed, you don't need to caulk any of the seams whatsoever. There's actually a channel in them that if water does get down inside, it'll run down the channel of the walls and drain back into the shower base. So, uh, but there'll be a sticker and on the instructions showing you, you know, where to put that little bit of silicone there that I was talking about. All right, here Mike's kind of showing you, we're getting ready to install the side walls. So on the side walls will be a couple of pegs and they're gonna go in the grooves to that back wall. So you kind of lift the wall up, put the pegs in the grooves, and then you'll just push the walls down. This is hard to video for you guys because you know we kind of got to be in the way as we do it, but you'll see there that he's pushing it down. And that's what basically locks the side walls into the back wall. And you can see there that seam is nice and straight. You know, and that's from Mike taking time and, you know, cleaning those edges off uh, with his razor knife and that little file and stuff. So, all right, now that you got one sidewall in, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pre-drill a couple holes. So basically there's a nailing flange that goes along the, you know, the outer edge of the walls. And that's what fastens it to the studs. Again, he's just pre-drilling here. So when he puts his screws in, the screw heads sit flush a little bit. Remember guys, these shower units go in up to the two by fours. Uh, you don't drywall first. The only thing you wanna make sure you do is if you are installing these and you have an outside wall behind them, you'll wanna put your insulation in first, okay? Uh, otherwise it's tough to get, in, you know, to get the insulation in afterwards, so. All right, like I said, that's called the nailing flange. It's around the front edge and the top of the walls. Um, you know, about every 12 inches, 18 inches or so, you want to make sure you got these screwed in. All right, there you go. And you can see on the top edge there how nice and level it is. You know, that nailing flange, if you can tell, there's got a bunch of dimples in it. You know, those are just, uh, you know little places where you can drill or whatever. So now what Mike's showing you here is how to use a shim. So, you know, these studs here, uh, they're not perfect. They're not exactly square. So this is why you might need some wood shims is to level everything out. Put that piece of shim in there and just screw right through it. That's why it's nice you know, pick yourself up. Those shims cost you like two bucks. Every hardware store carries them. You know, they're usually up by the register, so. All right, so we've got the back wall in and we've got the right wall in, in this case. So now we got to put the left wall in. This is the one that has the shower valve installed. So at some point we're going to have to drill a hole, you know, in the wall because the shower valve will actually stick into it. So Mike's just showing you again there, you know, more sanding down of the wall. All right, so here guys is how to measure, right? Because when you drill this hole in that left wall, you got to be on, man. So measure two, three times, drill once. So what he's gonna do is actually measure off of the seam of the back wall here, okay? I can't tell what that is, about 10 inches over the center. We use either a three inch or a four inch hole saw bit. Basically, when you buy your shower valves, it's gonna come with that round trim plate, right? The chrome or brush nickel uh, that the handle sticks out of. Basically, you just need your hole that you drill in the fiberglass to be smaller than that trim plate. So Mike's measuring, you know, up off the bottom, measuring off of that right wall. Now he comes over to the side wall. He's gonna measure again here, and he's gonna make a mark on it. Remember guys, don't rush this part, okay? Because if you drill the hole wrong, yeah, you're, you're going and buying a new wall kit. Now, unfortunately, the two side walls come together so you actually have to buy buy both walls so believe me you guys man we have drilled holes in the wrong spot before and had to buy a new wall kit so that's what I'm telling you 
you know, triple check your measurements. Basically, at the end of the day, you're just trying to figure out uh, where that center mark of that valve is. Like I said, Mike here is using, I can't tell what that is. You know, it's either a three inch or a four inch hole saw bit. There's guys that probably use those multi-purpose tools to cut this. Uh, you don't want to force this in, you know, just take your time, man. Get it started nice and slow. See how he's doing that there. Don't rush it. Nice and easy, guys. Like I said, don't force this too hard. Don't push too hard. You don't want to crack your crack your shower wall. Again, guys, these are plastic, man, basically, at the end of the day. Nice and easy here. These aren't very thick at all. I mean, I'm, I don't even know if they're a quarter inch, you know, thick, to be honest. So it doesn't take a lot to get through them. Yeah, there you go. You can see right there. Nice and easy. All right. Well, if he did everything right, you know, that's the moment of truth <laughs> coming up. So, all right, on this wall, he's putting the other silicone bead. Remember that orange sticker I talked to you about earlier. Just put a little bead of silicone that's on top of the shower base right there. Now he's going to bring this wall over. And again, there's the pegs on the back of the wall. Now this one's just a little bit more difficult because you got the shower valve in the way. As you see there, that's a great shot of the peg and how they slide into the hooks of the back wall. There you go. So that's just gonna push down. But you gotta remember your valve is kind of sticking out. That's why you know drilling like a four inch hole where that valve is gives you a little bit of room to do that. All right, and at the end of the day, guys, that there is what you want, man. You want your shower valve to be centered in your hole, you know, pretty close. Remember, you got a little bit of room for error there because there's going to be a chrome trim plate that covers that hole. So, all right, so here Mike's just adding some blocking in, you know, that nailing flange going around the wall. If you have studs that don't line up on, you got to screw those in. So my guys carry cordless nail guns on their trucks. This way they got to add a piece of two by four in, uh, you know, somewhere. It's just, just how we roll, man. You know, when the framer built these walls here, they don't know exactly what's going in. And, you know, they, they sometimes just don't get the studs in the right places. So we got to come in and put our own uh, backing in. So eventually Mike is going to screw that sidewall into, you know, these small blocks of wood that he's installing here. You could put a full two by four there if you want. You know, we don't have one on the job site. You don't need to, you know, nail the entire length of the shower wall in. So um, he's just throwing up some small pieces of blocking here. And then when he goes around the other side, he has something to screw into. So once again, he's making sure stuff is level. Again, this is where sometimes you might need shims. Remember, not everything's perfect, all right? Um, when you're doing a project like this, guys, don't get frustrated. Almost in your head, tell yourself it's not all going to go right, all right? Um, otherwise, it's easy to get frustrated when things aren't perfect. Believe me, we do so many of these. Sometimes they snap right in together. Sometimes the walls are absolutely perfect. A lot of times they aren't. You know, more times than not, they're not. So there you can see a good shot there, you know, that piece of wood blocking that he had put in. Um, so he needs some, some shims here. You know, two really important is a lot of these fiberglass sectional units, you know, people don't put shower doors on, they'll just have a shower curtain. But the reason you want those walls perfectly square is, you know, if you do go to put a shower door on later on, those doors can't be crooked, you know, for them to open and shut correctly, your walls on your shower units have to be, have to be perfect. So here he's just kind of shimming stuff up a little bit. And, you know, and this is where, when it comes time to drywall, boy, you gotta have some skills, okay? As the plumber here installing this shower unit, there's only so much we can do. Um, you know, we gotta get our unit in square. If the framing isn't square, this is what we do to shim it up. some more screws in. You always want one in the top corner of each side. You know, and then like I said, about 12 inches down or so, you know, have a screw in. So, all right, once he gets it done here, uh, 
Now he's gonna come back, he's gonna show you how to put the rubber gasket in the strainer. Basically, it's, a, it's about the last step you need to do on installing this unit here. Get everything nice and clean, all right? Wipe it down. You don't want a bunch of little debris, you know, sitting in your shower there, so. All right, so we're gonna take our pure silicone, right? We're just gonna go around the edge of that pipe like that. Fill that little void up in there between your shower strainer. You know, you don't have to do that part, but again, we don't want this to leak, okay? So it's just an extra step we take. Now, if you see the rubber gasket, this comes with that shower strainer. See how it's beveled on one end? That bevel side will go facing up, right? So that rubber gasket's gonna push down in there. Remember, bevel side up. That's just kind of squishing down in there. And that silicone you put in there just kind of fills the little bit of a void. Again, it's just kind of an extra step we like to do. Take a flat screwdriver and you want that gasket pushed all the way down. It'll only go so far. The strainer, you know, the bottom of it is kind of cupped. So you're not going to push the gasket through. All right, the strainer then comes with this little uh, locking nut right here. You can see the inside of that strainer is threaded. So you just kind of tighten that down and basically that's what's gonna squish that rubber gasket down. And it'll come also with this little silver tool here. I think Mike's gonna show you here in a minute. Cause now you need to kind of tighten that little brass nut down that went on uh, the inside there. All right, that right there, guys, that will come with this brass shower strainer. All that purpose is, that's a little tool to help you tighten this down. See how it kind of fits in there in between the notches? Take your regular screwdriver and just snug that up. Now, if you lose that tool or if you want, you can actually take a, you know, a regular screwdriver and a hammer and just kind of tighten that nut down you know, as well here, but this is the proper way to do it. That's the whole purpose of this tool is so that you can snug that nut down on the inside there. You know, Mike's got a screwdriver here that's, you know, squared off on so, you know, on each side so he can take his crescent wrench then. You want that pretty snug. You gotta remember, man, that's where water's draining down, you know, so you don't want that to leak. When it's all said and done there, that's a good close-up shot right there so you can really see what's happening there. All right, and then there is a cover then for that strainer and it basically just snaps in there. There it is right there. Yeah, it's got some tape on it. You can leave it on for now. You know, if you're still doing doing the job, got some construction going on, but that just pounds down in there. It'll snap in there, okay? All right, that's what it looks like when it's all said and done. You want that nice and flush. So you step back and take a look. There you go, there you have it. Again, this is a Sterling Ensemble shower unit. They make this in different designs. And guys, there are all kinds of different styles of them out there. This is just showing you how to install this one, but it gives you a pretty good understanding on how a lot of these shower units install. So, um, you know, now that we're done, you'll put uh, your shower trim on and you're good to go.